The year's 2010. Our guest today made Harrison County their third individual state champion. If you would, you introduce yourself. Brandon Barnett as the 189 in 2010. And you joined um, Roy Gibbs in 1992 and Kevin Case in 1996 as being uh, one of three Harrison County individual state champions. So thank you for being here today. Really appreciate it. So I have to ask, how does a young Brandon Barnett find wrestling? I found wrestling in the second grade. I was at a wrestling match. I actually sat behind uh, coach's wife, and, or coach's daughter, per se, and I said, I would really like to do that. And uh, she said, well, I can introduce you to coach. And I went down there and talked to coach. Coach said, well, show up on Monday. I said, all right. And I showed up on Monday, and he walked. I walked in. He said, what grade are you in, fifth or sixth? <laughs> I said, I'm in the second. And he knew right away that he didn't want me there, but he couldn't tell me to go home. So that's how, that's how it all started. Mm. So just a just a big kid. Just a, I was I was a big kid, and I started wrestling on the varsity team, practicing with the varsity team in the second grade. Wow, not too many people can say that. that you're probably one of uh, very few, maybe a coach's son here or there scattered in, but I would say just somebody just ran showing up for wrestling practice. I'd say you you're in the small minority on that, but. Kind of walk us through your wrestling journey because we're, we're going to go over your bracket and how you place in, at state and stuff, but just kind of walk us through your uh, your middle school, high school career. Just how does it, how does it go? Um, I didn't have an elementary school or middle school career because I wrestled on the varsity team. I started wrestling varsity. I was in the sixth grade at 103. Uh, that was the year that they said sixth graders weren't allowed to wrestle varsity, so coach wrestled me unattached in every tournament we went to, and I didn't win a single match. Mm. I got the hell beat out of me everywhere we go, and I had to cut weight to make 103 in the sixth grade. And then got up in the seventh grade and started in 119. Um, went about even that year, about 30 and 30 that year, somewhere around there. And then uh, got up into the eighth grade, and um, I think I was about a 135, 145 in the eighth grade. And uh, did, did right well my eighth grade year. Uh, I believe I made it to regionals my eighth grade year. Uh, my freshman year, I weighed about 160 and wrestled 189. I had to weigh above 162. I would have to drink gallons of water before weigh-ins in order to be above 162 just to wrestle. Mm -hmm. And ended up uh, making it to state my, senior, my, my freshman year as being 30 pounds underweight. My goodness gracious. Now, 2009, you're a sophomore. I've got you 171 pounds, seventh place. Um, you beat uh, Brad Hitchings, I think, two time, two or three times state champion. You meet him, and he kind of put you down into the constellation round. Is that correct? Yes. That's yes. what I he, thought. He, 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 he got me good. Now, um, the, the year we're going to be talking about is 2010, so we'll save that. 2011, 189 pounds, you're a senior. You're in the state finals again, but you come up just a little bit short. So you're in the finals back-to-back -back years, both years at the dungeon, the last year at the, uh, the dungeon. And you, um, you're in there with, like, J.J. Jude, Brock Irvin, a couple of guys, you know, these names from the – so yep. you, you, 2011 was a really good year for, for Kentucky wrestling. But 2010 is what we're going to talk about. You're a junior, 189 pounds. First round, you wrestle Will Conrad from North Oldham. You in that – by fall in 22 seconds. So just enough to get out there and get a little bit of a sweat going, right? Yes. In the uh, second round, you're wrestling uh, Hudson Dockery from Connor. You win that by fall in a minute, 15 seconds. So two matches, two first round pins. The uh, quarterfinals, you're wrestling Cooper Bond from Louisville Trinity. You win that by fall in a minute, 10 seconds. So Three matches, three first-round pins. So you're on a mission here, ma'am. You're on an absolute mission. You get to the semifinals. You're wrestling Kyle Durbin from Louisville Eastern. You win that by a 12 to 8 decision. So first kid you've had to go all three periods. Was he just? I mean, semifinals are always really tough competition. Do you remember anything about that? No, I don't. Uh, I, I do remember um, not going six minutes a lot at all my junior or senior year. Mm -hmm. Um, 
but I do remember when I did have to go six minutes, it, it hurt. It hurt me bad. Uh, yeah, it's like I said, three uh, three matches, three first round, and quick first round uh, first round pins at that. So you know your gas tank is being pushed there on that one. It's a good thing gas wasn't a dollar or four sixty nine a gallon then, right? That's it was for sure. A little that bit cheaper for back sure. then. Um, now, as you guys saw at the start of the video, I, uh, Brad Stafford, who you wrestle in the finals, is um, passed away, and um, you know, got, I got to referee Brad. I knew Brad away from wrestling. Um, Brad was a uh, amazing guy. He uh, ended up passing away on a just a complete random. I don't even want to use the word freak, but just a complete accident. Just one in a trillion. We're not going to go in into it, um, but it was just a complete just accident. That's the only word you can say. And a couple guys um, have reached out and wanted to do some uh, like um, personal stories about Brad. So we're going to put those in to the video now and enjoy those. Hello, my name is Josh Muncy. I'm the head wrestling coach and head football coach here at Martin County High School slash Sheldon Clark High School. We're formerly Sheldon Clark. Um, Alex had contacted me and asked me to say a few words about a former athlete of ours. I guess he's um, doing a video with a uh, state champion out of Harrison County. And uh, he wrestled Brad Stafford of Sheldon Clark in the state finals in 2010, I believe. Uh, Brad was in the state finals in 2009 and 2010. And so, uh, you know, first things first, Alex, I, I love what you're doing for the state of Kentucky and highlighting these guys and these videos and traveling to different areas of the state. And, uh, you know, we get to see a more in-depth look at, at the individual and, and the thought process going into these matches. And I think it's great. I think it's awesome. Uh, you know, I, I hope you uh, continue to get the support. And there's a lot of a lot of good wrestlers in Harrison County that you're getting ready to highlight, and that's great. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to watch the videos. Um, so, you know, back to Brad. Uh, you know, anybody can can watch a video or, or look at a picture of Brad and, and realize that, man, that guy was one of the most physically gifted and blessed athletes, I think, that I, at least for me, that I've ever coached. Uh, he was strong as an ox, had a gas tank that would last for days. I don't know if I ever saw the kid get winded in a match or get tired. Um, he was quick on his feet. He was just a, a physical specimen. You know, he looked like he was chiseled from granite, like a like a Greek sculpture or something. Uh, it, Brad was, was honestly, physically, probably the best athlete that, you know, I think I've ever seen in high school anyways. And, and uh, you know, that's very, very easy to see uh, looking at a picture or a video, you know. And, and a funny story about how physically gifted Brad was is he wrestled his junior year in the semifinals uh, against a Union County wrestler named Tim McKinney, I think. And uh, Brad, it was a three-period match. I think Brad ended up winning. It was a decision, maybe 7-2. to two, And uh, Brad came off the mat. We were in the bleachers, and, and Brad came off the mat, and he still had his singlet on. He was carrying his shorts and his, and his shirt and stuff. And uh, I said, Brad, you need to go get off your feet and, and uh, get a shower and relax, and let's get something to eat and, and, and get rested up for the finals. And he said, yeah, yeah Coach, I, I got you. But first I need to run upstairs and get a T-shirt. And uh, I didn't know what he was talking about. Well, there was a there was a Marine pull-up challenge, I think, upstairs. And uh, I think you had to do maybe 20 strict pull-ups or 25 to get a T-shirt. You know, you could do less and get a water bottle, a lanyard, whatever. And so, uh, you know, Brad, just minutes after his match, still sweating, uh, not breathing heavy, but still sweating from, from his match, uh, runs up the stairs, grabs a pull-up bar, does a set of 20 or 25 strict pull-ups, pull-ups and uh, gets his t-shirt and comes back downstairs and you know in my head I'm thinking after any wrestling match that I ever wrestled I'm not sure that I could do a pull-up especially if I wrestled all three periods you know and th this kid just wrestled a seven minute or sorry a six minute war with another kid and the Union County kid was a specimen too I mean he was jacked and and uh, again he looked like a, a, a sculpture too and and so, you know, those two guys had just wrestled a war, and Brad still had the, the, the muscle endurance to go upstairs and, and hit 20 to 25 strict pull-ups. It, it's pretty amazing. So, you know, as far as his physical abilities, uh, two-time state finalist, uh, just uh, unreal physical uh, specimen. 
But you know, a lot of a lot of things you can't see from a picture of Brad and and uh, you know those those of us that that were blessed enough to know Brad and, and get to spend some time with Brad and and be a part of his life uh, that that ended a little too soon uh, is that you know Brad was just a very very loving, caring, compassionate uh, person, and he was uh, he had a really gentle soul. Uh, he was very, very fun, loving, fun to be around. Uh, you know, he had that smile and, and that, that character that just, you wanted to be around Brad. Uh, you, you could be having a really bad day and, and you could be having a worst day of your week, month, year, whatever. And, uh, Brad could give you that smile and put his arm around you and tell you he loves you. And it would really just completely turn your day around. It, it would take you from a from a bad place to to a really good place. And, and Brad had that ability to uh, to just really uh, make people feel good. He can make people feel good. You know, just his 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 soul and his character. He was uh, he was one of those guys that you know uh, his teammates loved him, his coaches loved him, the officials loved him. You know, he was uh, he didn't know a stranger. You know, he. He could talk, have a conversation, and and uh, befriend anybody, and uh, you know that he was that kind of kid that um, you know he you knew that Brad was going to be successful beyond high school, beyond sports, just because of his charisma and his character, and and uh, you know he he was just uh, he was a blessing to be around. And any of the guys that wrestled with him can tell you, and, and anybody that's ever got to spend time around him, you know, uh, outside of his family, but us and, 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 and our his teammates, his teammates' parents, and, you know, wrestling's a tight-knit community, and I'm sure that there's been guys uh, from other schools that, that he befriended, and, and uh, he touched their lives in the same manner. So, you know, uh, Brad was a, was a special person, and... Uh, Man, God really broke the mold when he made Brad Stafford, and he made sure that there will never be another Brad Stafford. And, uh, and you know, we just got to consider ourselves lucky, those of us that, that got to be a part of that young man's life and, and impact him. And, you know, I, I, I coached him through high school, and, and uh, you know, I could, I could say that I impacted his life, but I can tell you this, Brad Stafford impacted my life just as much or more than I than I probably ever impacted his life. Um, you know, he was one of those kids. If you could have a whole team of Brad Staffords, you you would have a a very very fun team to be around and a, a good group of guys. And so, uh, you know, I think it's awesome that that he's even in his you know his early death that he's going to be a part of this video series because you know he was a big part of Sheldon Clark wrestling and. Uh, and his spirit and and his soul and his character and everything about Brad will always live on in Martin County wrestling, in Sheldon Clark wrestling. Um, you know, he'll never be forgotten. He's, uh, he's one of a kind. So thank you, Alex. Keep up the good work. Hey, guys. My name is Ryan Kelly. I am a former teammate of Brad and a former wrestling partner of Brad as well. Um, Alex wanted me to talk about uh, my favorite moment with Brad, so uh, let's get into that. So, um, going into the 2009, 2008-2009 wrestling season, uh, me being Brad's partner, I knew that he was uh, a really good wrestler. Um, he had tremendous amount of strength, but he also, I think, what he had more of was a tremendous amount of endurance, and couple of those two together, he was... A pretty big force to be reckoned with on the wrestling mat. Um, so uh, going into the tournament, you know, we knew Brad was good. He had placed eighth the year before, so he had a, he, he had already became an all stater by this point. Um, but going into the tournament, the tournament was unfolding. Brad was having a very good tournament. He was wrestling very well, and I can remember when he got he made it to the state semifinals, and we were all so excited because. You know, this was this is the moment. You know, is this the moment? You, is this the hurdle you can overcome? Can you get into that state final match? And I could remember Brad. He had a very tough opponent. Uh, the guy, the guy was from Union County, and if you remember this match, uh, this opponent was almost like the uh, 
I could do uh, almost an identical wrestler to what to what Brad was as far as his physique and as far as his wrestling style from what I can remember. Uh they they were both very strong and very uh um uh, long winded athletes, very good wrestlers. And uh I can remember watching that match and being on uh being on the edge of my seat over it because uh, you know, it, it was such an intense moment. The match was a very close match that I remember. I don't remember all of the details of that match. Uh, but I just remember feeling uh, so excited after seeing him win that and knowing that he was going to be a state finalist. Uh, that year, um, we had uh, three state finalists, myself and uh, our other teammate, Matt Sloan. And uh, to have all three of us um, in in the finals that year was a very surreal moment for me and, and all of us, really. <clears throat> and uh, it was just a very exciting time. There's so many more things I could say about Brad. We, me and Brad had a, a, a long history together uh, growing up, and I knew Brad for a very long time. And uh, you know, I, I miss I miss uh, miss seeing him and everything. But uh, you know, we we know he's in a better place, and uh, just happy for the for the moments and the memories that we do have that that I do get to have with Brad. Those memories live on in me and live on in us and his teammates. So. Uh, thank you, Alex, for asking me to do this, and uh, I appreciate getting to share my part of the story. Thank you to those guys for sending us those videos and those just nice words about Brad. Um, Brad was just, uh, he had probably one of the, the biggest smiles that you, you've, ever, you've ever seen. Brad was just, a, just an amazing, amazing guy. And had you wrestled Brad before? I don't believe I ever wrestled Brad before. I could be wrong about that, but I don't believe I did. Um, I don't remember my junior year as well as I remember my senior year, mm -hmm. but I don't don't believe I, I wrestled him before this match. Now, this is Brad's second time in the finals. 2009, he was in the finals as well. He comes up short in that one, but the, the we don't... Again, I start saying this in every video. If you have the 2009 video... The, the state finals or even matches, uh, maybe you wrestled in it or you know somebody sitting on it or whatever, please reach out to me. I have a VHS and DVD converter. I'd love to get them for my collection. That way we can, you know, be able to tell more stories because that's the whole point of doing this is having the video, letting the guys watch it, letting you guys watch it and letting people see. Finally put Matt Time with name. Because I've seen, you know, Brandon Barnett's name on the 189-pound 2010 uh into the bracket for years, but until I started doing this series, I mean, I didn't get to see, I wasn't at this state tournament, so I didn't get to see the finals. So it's good to be able to do this. But you're in the finals under the lights. Does anybody like that has been there before come to you and give you any advice? Or what are we thinking about being in the finals? Um, Coach Regal just kind of came to me and told me, you know, just another match, do what you know, do what you do best. Mm -hmm. You know, he had a saying that you you know one, you near perfect one, you perfect one, you know a third one well. Um, and, you know, he just said go out there and hit those three moves that you know and that's all you need to do. And that's, that's good advice. This is probably the best photo that, I, that I've seen of a, somebody coming off the match. You guys are going to see this was the thumbnail. I want to get it where the light's not glaring on it here. What an amazing photo. I'm not sure. Do you know who took this photo? Did Coy take it? Somebody on the I, I, so love, I, I believe. That's an amazing photo. It's a, the, um, you, of course, you're coming off, pointing up at the sky. And, of course, you're wearing that Breads trademark, and we was able to dig one out. I don't think this is the exact same one you wore, but it's the same type. Uh, got, the, got the Breads on the front, and it's got the, uh, the horseshoe paw, or the hor horseshoe paw, the horseshoes on the back. Of course, yep. in case you don't know, the Harrison County... Mascot is the Thoroughbreds. What a uh, perfect name to be right in the heart of horse country. Yep. Um, couldn't think of a, a better suited name for the school. So the, the story behind that photo is is uh, nobody really, or not very many people know this. My grandfather passed away in the middle of season. And uh, I took two weeks off from wrestling. Uh, it hit me hard. It was uh, very emotional. When I came back, I said I wouldn't lose another match. And uh, I came back, lost my first two matches back. Um, and then after that, we never lost another one. 
Mm, my goodness. And see, that's what I love about this. Come off the KHSA website, the bracket. It has your name. It has, of course, champion, how you win, all that. But it doesn't tell the story about your grandfather. Yeah, my grandfather, away. you know, never missed a match, never missed anything. Wow. So my that, that was the, the story behind, you know, this took two weeks off and I came back from two weeks. We went to Campbell County. End up losing to the guy from Campbell County in the decision. End up losing from a guy from out of state for decision, and uh, had a full body cramp actually after those two matches. I never went. I don't think I went six minutes the whole year before that. And mm. uh, and then after that, I told I told coach that we're not losing another one. Well, uh, what was your grandfather's name? Kenton Barnett. Kenton. So that's an just an amazing, and that's why I love doing this is being able to tell that story. So enough of us talking. We're going to put the video on and go back to 2010 and watch this finals. You guys are seeing what we're seeing under the lights at the dungeon in Frankfort. Now, Harrison County to Franklin County, Cynthia to Frankfort isn't that far of a trip, is it? Well, no. probably 35, 40 minutes. Yeah, probably. Something like that. So this is before, I guess, MySpace, for those of you who remember MySpace and Facebook <laughs> existed, but when the word gets out that... You know, Harrison County has the rest on the finals. Does, like, a lot of your family come, a lot of friends? How does that? Yeah, when, when word got out that I was in the finals, there was a lot of people came, a whole lot of people. Because it before that, it's been, you know, it, it was Ashbrook and them were in the finals. But uh, it, it, it had been a couple of years before we had since we had anybody in the finals. I, th I think you had Ashbrook and Bo in 07, and then Bo wrestled Harrison, Harrison Courtney again in 08 so it played a couple years since harrison had somebody in the finals so you're under the lights here um i'm sure that you know it, you're all your family's there yeah my there. family's there and it was kind of unexpected for me to be in the finals that year i, I wasn't i wasn't ranked in a top 10 i wouldn't it was kind of unexpected for me to be there all right so Hit the space bar. We're going to go back to 2010. Let's do this. I will say this this match probably has my favorite singlet combination of all the videos that I have. So Brad gets two right away. You hit a switch. That white Sean Clark singlet with the blue and then, of course, your finals with the breads on it. I love this uh, singlet. Yeah, match up here. So, so I was I was always so much longer than everybody I wrestled. He was always so. Most people were much stronger than me, but right. I I could hit a switch on anybody I wrestled, and it didn't matter. Looks like we've got a uh, a young Joe Catan and a even younger Rocky out there. So it's two to two. First period. What's your go to? What's your what are we breaking down here? Uh, I'm hitting a spiral and throwing a leg in 90% of the time. Uh, doesn't look like that's what I did that time, but uh, everybody knows that I'm trying to throw a leg in. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. It was not a secret. Well, going back and watch this, I forgot how muscular Brad was. So gets his reversal. So it's four yep. to two. So you got a you got a Brad and you got a Brandon chant going on. So one uh, one syllable away from yeah. And it's been ten years since I've watched this match. Really? So this is now on bottom. Were you? I don't want to say just gassing out, but were you just like strategically not trying to come up or just waiting to see what he gave you? Or no, I never really came up much. Mm -hmm. I was waiting for a switch mm -hmm. about all the time. Um, and it looks like that I'm taking it easy, waiting for waiting to get another period. All right, so Brad throws a boot in. And that was but, not him. He didn't know how to ride boots at all. Yeah. Uh, that, wasn't, that wasn't his game. Yeah. All right, so it's Brad's choice. He, he defers. You're taken down. That was automatic. Yep. Didn't even didn't even have to look at coach.
hitting that switch again. You're tough on that switch, man. I, I enjoyed it and really perfected it in my senior year. No, and it, it, I mean, right here, you're getting ready to get a reversal, looks like. Yep. Two. So, 4-4. Four, four. I can hear Josh Muncy, young belly. I'm pretty sure that Brad has uh, Dan and Josh Muncy in the, uh, of course, you guys saw a video from Josh in his corner. Who's in your corner right here? Uh, Coach Regal and Luke Tucker. And uh, so Coach Regal, of course, was there when I started in the second grade. Right. And uh, he told everybody he was retiring when Josh and Bo left. Mm -hmm. And uh, I begged him to stay. And That's the one right there, correct? Yes, sir. I didn't near have fall, to, near fall. I didn't have to beg him very long to stay. Ooh. So you got a near fall, but then he hit you with the reversal right there. Yep. So it should be 6-6, six, six, I believe. I think they got the score. Uh, yeah, 6-6 six, six should be. There we go. So, he's holding on. You can start, you can, the 2010 tape, 2011, you can start to see the scrambling. Everybody starting to scramble. Yeah. Like, even, you know, you guys heard 89 pounds. That was probably a better scramble than we got in any lot of weights in the 90s right mm -hmm. there. Don't get mad at me, lightweight guys from the 90s. Y'all know I, I love you, but. Holding on, holding on, holding on. He's still got control, yep. whatever. So 6'6", six, six, Brad's choice. I'm sure he's going down. Brad looks like a, a dog. Brad, Brad went down, and I don't think his coaches agreed with it. His coaches wanted to take neutral. Um, oh, really? I was not good on my feet. Mm. I was horrible on my feet. And I was really good on top. And uh, So you're trying like a banana split or something? Trying to split here. And uh, he's trying to get his feet off. One, two. Does Joe give you a two count right there? I don't believe so. It's close, close. Trying it for it again. So these bigger guys, I would dangle my head mm -hmm. and ask them to grab it in this situation. And uh, not still, mate. Fred still down. I got really good at that when I was 160 wrestling 189, mm -hmm. and just roll through and ride it and hit them with a what do we call that? A guillotine. A guillotine. Looks says your record is like 43 and three. That's, that's what the graphic said. I'm not sure if that's... I believe, yes. I believe I lost one match before my grandfather passed away and then came back after that. So it's tied up. You, are you cognizant of the score of the time here? Or are you just wrestling? Yeah, because coaches, they're, they're half tempted to make let me let him up. Mm -hmm. um, and I told him I'd rather go into overtime than I would let him up. Uh, I can see that. Right here is where he reaches back and grabs my hand yep. and grabs me. All I got to do is hold on to that leg. Yep. He, he doesn't have any controls. Near he can't fall. get back close. Oh. Ooh. Mm. Mm. Now, you got him right here. Do you know you're getting a fall? Uh, no, I know I'm getting back points, and I do not. I mean, but like in your head, you realize I'm not letting him up without a pin. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to throw both boots in now for a Saturday night. Right. There it is. Mm. 34.7 seconds left, man. Because I knew in my head, I didn't know if they gave him that reversal and they gave him back points mm. before I got right. gave me the reversal back and gave me back points. Here's the, uh, of course, the medal. You still have your medal? 
Yes, I have I have a frame with my singlet, all my regional medals. I believe there's four regional medals and three state, maybe five regional medals. You'll have to send me some photos that way I can put them in right here. So if you're not seeing any photos, somebody didn't send me some photos. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But it would be nice to have if you could, you know, a couple of them, just whatever. Yeah, there's, um, the, there's the Campbell County guy that beat me earlier in the season. Really? Yeah, that's the first match back after my grandfather passed away. He beat me. Um, and I don't know what the first loss was of the season. I'm not real sure on that one. This was such a just a phenomenal venue for wrestling. It, what, this was, 2010 was a three-day state tournament. Those were had to be exhausting. But just the, the layout, the way the, the middle podium and everything was right there close. Uh, then you had the mats, you know, ran straight into the crowd. There was no like buffer zone, whatever. This was the best. Yes, for sure. Best venue. For sure. That was my, that was the guy that beat me earlier in the season. Oh, really? Bernard Ray. Bernard, yeah. That was. Here comes Brad. When I was editing this, Brad come back shaking everybody's hand. I was like, that, that, that is the most Brad Stafford. He was such a, just a good guy. I could see him doing that. Sure. And of course, here you are, man. I think that's uh, Chris McCoy. I don't remember where he coached when I was in school. Dunbar, I think. Lafayette? Lafayette. That's about, sounds about right. So. On top of the world, man. Come third state champion Harrison County program history behind, like I said, Roy Gibbs in 90, 92 and um, Kevin Case in 96. So watching it back, did anything jog, anything play out differently than you remember it? Um, no, not really. I did. I, I thought I moved a little bit better on bottom first two periods. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. It, but... But no, nothing. Everybody knew what I was going to do when I walked down the mat. Everybody knew I was horrible at neutral. On my feet, I was horrible. Everybody knew that I, I hit a switch on bottom, and everybody knew I was throwing legs in on top. Mm. It, was, it, was, it was what I did, and, and any, anybody that, that I thought could compete with me, those are the three moves I hit. Um, there was times that Coach Regal would tell me, I'm not allowed to hit those three. Coach Regal would say, I want you to hit this, this, and this, and... And Coach Regal, it's a finals at a tournament. And he's like, I don't care. I want to see a fireman's. I haven't seen a fireman's in all season. And he would say, well, he's like, all right, can I pin him with something I want to pin him with? He's like, nope, I want you to pin him with the fireman's. And so I'd have to go out there, and I'd have to hit the coach. I'd have to hit the move coach wanted me to hit and and, and just make yeah. him happy. It's all, yeah. it's all it was about. And, of course, it it got you on the podium. It got you forever, you know, in the in the rafters of Harrison County, on forever in the history book and forever, you know, with this – uh, video series, being able to you know tell your story, the um, like, like I said, the uh, the story about your grandfather. That's stories like that is why I love doing this. I, I know that's why you guys like hearing this because you know we're in the practice room today, Harrison County. If you wrestled, no matter what school you were at or whatever, you were pretty much doing the same thing everybody else was. You was cutting weight, you was running, you was doing early morning exercises, you was getting on a bus in the snow, going, you know, staying all day in the gym. And it wasn't just that you, you know, were doing it. Everybody else that was there was doing the exact same thing. So we all kind of collectively may not know each other, but we know what we go through. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much. Everything but cutting weight. Well, yeah, you just happened to, to add weight, I, sh I, was, I guess I should I say. Wouldn't, I wouldn't want to cut, and cut much weight. The uh, But just being able to tell the story about your grandfather. And I'm sure other people out there watching this or maybe not haven't met, found the series yet, have a similar, you know, my dad passed away, my brother passed away, mom, whoever it was you were close to, you know, this one's for, you know, your grandfather, this one's for my mom, this one's for whoever. So, so many people can feel a connection to that, you know, by your story. So thank you for sharing that with us. And again, um, to, the, uh, to the family of Brad Stafford and all the Shell and Clark and Martin County um, people that are going to be watching this, um, do you have anything you'd like to say about Brad? I I didn't know Brad other than there at State. Uh, we didn't wrestle much in the same tournaments. We were so far apart. Uh, 
He was always nice. He always had a big chew to buck in and always had uh, uh, protein shakes underneath his arms. That's all he yeah. was about was building muscle and chewing tobacco. But yeah. he, was, he was nice as could be. Yeah, and again, thank you to the guys that sent videos. Really, really appreciate that. And it's just a, just a great story to be able to um, tell on your end and as far as being able to celebrate Brad's life. So that's all we got today with Brandon. Any closing thoughts about your time at Harrison County? Anything you want to wrap it up and put a bow on? Uh, it was a fun ride. You know, of course, we miss Coach Regal. That was, that was my the reason I stayed with it. Wrestling was not my first love. Football was my first love. I was just a little better at wrestling than I was football. Is the mm -hmm. only reason I stuck with it. Uh, I did. I did whatever Coach Regal asked me to do, and that was that's what got me on top of the podium, and that's what what got me on the podium in my senior year as well. Mm -hmm. And that's that's all we got today. Harrison County's third state champion. Now, I do want to say that we have reached out to Kevin Case from 1996. He couldn't be here today, but we are going to get with him. Um, just couldn't work it out to where he could come today. But don't fear, we are going to get Kevin on the channel. He's already agreed to do it. It's just getting up with him at the right time. And if you have the 1992 finals with Roy Gibbs on it, please reach out to me. We would love to be able to get that and get Roy's. That way we can have all three Harrison County state champions on the channel and be able to celebrate the Harrison County wrestling program as it should. That's all we got today from 2010. Thank you, Brandon Man, for being here today. Really appreciate it. That's all we got. We'll see you guys on the mats.